welcome to MSP lecture series on main group chemistry. Uh, this is 55th lecture in the series. Today I would uh, like to draw your attention to the chemistry of group 12 elements. Uh, group 12 elements have intermediate properties between main group elements as well as transition elements. Uh, of course, we have three elements zinc, cadmium and mercury. Uh, although these three elements are placed with the d block elements have properties much similar to main group elements rather than transition elements. And all these three elements have uh, d10 s2 electronic configuration with a group oxidation state of plus 2 uh, due to the loss of the 2 s electrons. And of course, uh, uh, HGF4 was theoretically predicted in 1994. Uh, if you just look into the ionization energies for zinc, cadmium and mercury, uh, you can see here uh, the first ionization energy for zinc, cadmium and mercury are given along with beryllium uh, that is 913, 874, 1013 and 906 kilojoules per mole. And similarly, second ionization potential is uh, uh, expected to be little higher. Uh, in case of zinc, it is 1740 kilojoules per mole, whereas in case of cadmium, mercury and beryllium, these values are 1638, 1816 and 1763 kilojoules per mole. From this data, it is very clear that uh, these three elements uh, resemble very close to beryllium in terms of uh, their first and second ionization enthalpies. Let me before I proceed further, let me give some idea about the people who discovered uh, these uh, uh, three elements. Zinc was discovered in 1668 by Andreas Margraf. You can see here this is how zinc looks like. And cadmium was discovered in 1817 by Frederick Straumeyer. And of course, mercury known uh, in ancient days since 1500 BC. And of course, it was known to Hindus even much earlier and also Egyptians knew how to uh, extract mercury from its ore cinnabar. In many aspects, as I had already mentioned, zinc and cadmium compounds are very similar to the analogous magnesium compounds and have the same structures. Mercury compounds have a greater degree of covalent character, often with low coordination numbers. And plus 1 state is quite well established for mercury, but it is very unstable in the case of zinc and cadmium. And zinc has much more similarities to beryllium. Both have similar first and second ionization energies. And though zinc 2 plus is larger than beryllium with different coordination numbers. Of course, when you look into beryllium, it has a maximum coordination number of 4, whereas zinc can have 4, 5 or 6 coordination. Uh, both metals react with acids and alkali and both form a basic ethanoate or acetate of the type uh, M4O6 acetates. Uh, you can see that one in the next slide. You can see here this is how uh, the zinc acetate uh, looks like. Of course, the carboxylate salts of the metals, magnesium to barium, have this type of uh, uh, normal salt structure. Of course, beryllium hydroxide also reacts with uh, uh, carboxylic acids such as acetic acid to give basic carboxylates uh, that I had discussed while discussing the chemistry of group 2 elements. Uh, this one is very similar to uh, this beryllium uh, basic carboxylate. Yeah, so, uh, we have one tetra bridging oxygen and bridging acetates. Because uh, of the NS electrons in zinc, cadmium and mercury uh, are tight bound, they are relatively unavailable for metallic bonding and so the metals are volatile with low melting and boiling points. In fact, mercury is a unique metal being a liquid at room temperature and forming a monoatomic gas. Let us look into the occurrence of uh, these three uh, elements. Of course, uh, zinc, cadmium and mercury are chalcophilic. 
that means they have strong affinity for the chalcogens such as sulfur, selenium and tellurium and they occur naturally as sulphide minerals. For example, zinc uh, occurs as zinc blend also known as phalarite having the composition ZnS and also contains trace amount of cadmium and mercury is obtained from its major uh, ore cinnabar that is HgS and of course, uh, HgS mercuric sulphide is unstable above 400 degree centigrade and decomposes to the metal. Uh, the zinc oxide and cadmium oxide are reduced to the metals using carbon and in case of uh, uh, mercuric sulphide uh, one can go for auto reduction in that process what one has to do is mercuric sulphide has to be uh, combined with a controlled amount of oxygen to form mercury oxide so that carbon can be used for reduction. However, because of uh, low decomposition temperature of mercuric sulphide before it could convert to mercury oxide it decomposes so that pure metal can be obtained. In case of zinc uh, one can do again auto reduction uh, zinc sulphide uh, can be converted into zinc oxide and then on treatment with carbon it gives zinc plus carbon monoxide. Uh, in case of mercury uh, same thing when attempts are made to convert mercuric sulphide into mercuric oxide it decomposes to give mercury plus SO2. Why this sulphide was have to be converted into oxide is we do not have a suitable reducing agent that can extract sulphur uh, from the sulphide ores. Only option we have is carbon disulphide or carbon uh, thiomonoxide or CS. CS does not have an independent existence and CS2 uh, is not a suitable reagent uh, for the reduction. So, as a result um, one has to convert into oxide and then use carbon or carbon monoxide to reduce the corresponding metal. Let us look into the chemistry of group 12 elements. Uh, the reactivity decreases down the group uh, similar to uh, other group uh, uh, elements. Although zinc and cadmium have high first and second ionization uh, energies, their reduct potential are quite large and negative owing to the high solvation energy that drives the reaction. So, they readily dissolve in non oxidizing acids. So, you can see here, so it can readily form Zn2 plus ions and despite having very high ionization energies. In contrast, mercury will only dissolve in oxidizing acids such as nitric acid. So, the standard reduct potential also I have given here. Uh, for zinc, cadmium and mercury. Of course, in case of mercury it is positive whereas in case of zinc it is negative minus 0 0.76 whereas in the case of cadmium it is minus 0 0.40 volts and of course, in case of mercury it is uh, plus 0 0.85 volts. So, let us look into the halides of uh, zinc, cadmium and mercury. All combinations of halides and metal are known for the group. The fluorides are ionic having very high melting point. For example, zinc fluoride uh, uh, crystallizes with the retail structure, retail means TiO2 structure, uh, while cadmium fluoride and mercury fluoride resemble that of Uh, calcium fluoride okay. and of course, zinc uh, fluoride and cadmium fluoride similar to magnesium fluoride they are poorly soluble in water. Uh, chlorides, bromides and iodides of zinc and cadmium are largely ionic, but covalent character for the combination of cadmium with heavier halides 
increases. In contrast, mercury halides are covalent solids which are only slightly soluble in water and are only dissociated into mercury 2 plus and X minus ions. Uh, you can just see uh, the structures of uh, zinc fluoride. As I mentioned, it crystallizes with rutile structure. Of course, one should uh, remember the rutile structure in which titanium is uh, surrounded by 6 oxygen atoms, whereas oxygen is tetrahedral in nature. Uh, while cadmium fluoride and mercury fluoride have the fluoride structure similar to uh, calcium fluoride structure I have shown and the zinc sulphide crystallizes in two forms. In low temperature zinc blend has polarite and the higher temperature wood size form. You can see here the wood site uh, structure is shown uh, here. Let us look into the chalcogenides and related compounds of zinc, cadmium and mercury. Of course, uh, because of uh, chalcophilic nature, zinc, cadmium and mercury form stable compounds with sulphur, selenium and tellurium as well. Okay. Similarly, if cadmium nitrate on treatment with uh, hydrogen sulphide gives cadmium sulphide through the formation of HNO3. And mercury has a strong affinity for thiolate ligands that is RS minus. Okay. So, and of course, uh, if H is there, they are called thiols. Thiols are essentially R, S, H. Mm -hmm. And these kind of uh, compounds uh, RSH are essentially known as mercaptans because of their affinity towards mercury. Uh, thiolate complexes of zinc, cadmium and mercury are very important in biological systems. Uh, in enzyme zinc is often bonded to the S atom of the amino acid that is cysteine. Uh, if you I have forgotten the structure of cysteine, here it is. Okay. Uh, so, this uh, has more affinity because of the presence of sulphur towards mercury and to an extent uh, zinc and cadmium as well. So, let us look into uh, the oxygen compounds. Uh, zinc has a relatively high affinity for oxygen whereas, mercury does not. Metal react directly with oxygen on heating. Uh, as I said earlier uh, above 400 degree centigrade mercuric oxide decomposes to the metal and oxygen and zinc oxide adopts woods right or zinc sulphide structure which has a tetrahedral coordination of zinc ions. Whereas, in case of cadmium oxide the larger cadmium 2 plus ion is better accommodated by NaCl structure uh, here having 6 coordination surrounding the cadmium 2 plus ion. Zinc oxide is amphoteric that means uh, it dissolves in both acids and bases with the excess base similar to aluminum the hydrated zincate anions uh, that is I have shown here ZnOHx H2O y times hold to the power of x minus 2 minus are formed and solid uh, salts such as uh, trihydroxy zincate and tetrahydroxy zincate can also be uh, conveniently crystallized. And in contrast to zinc oxide, cadmium oxide is not amphoteric. However, small amounts of cadmate anions may be formed since cadmium hydroxide dissolves in hot and very concentrated potassium hydroxide solution. And addition of M2 plus ion precipitates zinc hydroxide 
and cadmium hydroxide. Mercuric hydroxide does not exist and instead yellow mercuric oxide is formed. Zn2 plus plus 2 OH minus gives Zn OH twice. Uh, similar attempts to make mercuric hydroxide leads to the formation of mercuric oxide. Zinc and cadmium hydroxides also dissolve in aqueous ammonia solutions by the formation of ammonia complexes. For example, uh, this type of compounds are known where zinc is hexa coordinated surrounded by 4 ammonia ligands and 2 water ligands. Salts of axi acids are known for all three metals including nitrates, sulphates and chlorates. Uh, synthesized by reaction of the oxide with acid followed by crystallization. For example, uh, zinc oxide on treatment with uh, perchloric acid in aqueous medium gives zinc perchlorate of course here uh, this is the counter anion and it is surrounded by 6 water molecules so having trihedral geometry zinc and cadmium carbonates are rather unstable to heat as a result of the polarizing effect of the small zinc 2 plus and cadmium 2 plus ions causing decomposition to the oxide very similar to alkali and alkaline earth metal carbonates. For example, if you take CdCO3 it gives cadmium oxide through the liberation of carbon dioxide. Several uh, coordination complexes of zinc, cadmium and mercury are known and tetrahedral four coordination is the most common tetrahedral four coordination is most common for uh, group 12 elements uh, and also uh, whether they exist in neutral cationic or anionic form coordination number four is the most uh, uh, stable one uh, let me write few examples here for example uh, tetraamine zinc is known it is cationic Okay. Uh, neutral compounds are also known for example, uh, zinc chloride on treatment with the two equivalents of pyridine will form this type of compound. Similarly, mercury chloride on treatment with the two equivalents of triphenylphosphine forms neutral compound. of this type. Uh, similarly, anionic compounds are also known for example, tetracyanozincate and tetracyanoiodocadmate are known. Of course, uh, uh, they form uh, neutral compounds uh, and cationic compounds with uh, water as a ligand as well having coordination number 6. So, these are few examples of uh, uh, coordination compounds of zinc, cadmium and mercury. Mercury has a strong tendency to adopt lower coordination numbers than cadmium and zinc. It often displays linear 2 coordination in compounds such as dialkyl mercury and also a compound having a composition RHGX resembling a Grignard reagent. 
two coordinated compounds of this type are quite known and also in this case also it is two coordinated and this is very similar to R M G X. So, uh, otherwise four coordination is quite common for mercury compounds as well. So, colorless H G I 4 2 minus can be formed okay, starting from mercury iodide for example, if it is taken this is red in color and it is treated with uh, two equivalents of iodide it forms this one this is colorless. Okay. Uh, that means treatment of this one with potassium iodide solution gives this uh, uh, tetraiodo mercurate 2 minus ion. Let us look into low valent compounds of cadmium and zinc. Uh, you can see here CD2 2 plus and zinc 2 plus species are known, but are relatively unstable compared to analogous mercury compounds. There are they are formed only in anhydrous conditions and readily disproportionate in water to give the metal and dicationic uh, uh, corresponding metals. In contrast, mercury Hg2 2 plus ion is the most stable and the best known example of a monovalent species formed by this group. Uh, Hg2 plus ion is diamagnetic and M plus ion would be paramagnetic with one unpaired electron. So, dimeration occurs through Hg Hg bond formation giving Hg 2 plus ion. Hg plus plus Hg plus gives two plus this also can be written as Hg 2 2 plus. So, here uh, there is an equilibrium between Hg 2 plus and Hg 2 plus ion which has an equilibrium constant of about 170. So, that means uh, Hg 2 2 plus and Hg 2 plus is about 170. Okay. So, that means in an aqueous solution of mercury 2 salts there will be less than 0.5 percentage of Hg 2 plus present in solution. If Hg 2 plus ions are removed by complexation with uh, ligands which form stable complexes or insoluble compounds with say cyanide then the disproportionation goes to completion. So, that means uh, Hg2 2 plus on addition of cyanide ligands gives mercury plus mercury cyanide. Okay. So, this is called disproportionation reaction uh, plus 1 is giving 0 and 2 plus species and opposite reaction is also called comproportionation reaction. Okay. So, now uh, let us look into one example here one question using the following thermodynamic data that I have given here uh, show that mercurous chloride is unstable with respect to mercury chloride and mercury that means it is unstable with respect to the disproportionation reaction and here these thermodynamic data are given delta F H of mercurous chloride is minus 265 kilo joules per mole and delta F H naught for mercury chloride is minus 224 kilo joules per mole. Now, with this show with an appropriate balanced chemical equation the outcome of course, balanced chemical equation one can write easily. So, let me do it for you H G 2 C L 2 giving H G C L 2 plus H G. So, this is the uh, balanced chemical equation showing disproportionation of mercury chloride to mercury chloride plus mercury and these values are given. So, basically delta H equals delta F H naught of H G C L 2 plus delta F H 
H naught of H G minus delta F H naught of mercurous chloride. So, these values are already given. If you put these values here, uh, minus 224 is given for mercury chloride and of course, for this is 0 minus into minus 265. So, this will give you a net plus 41 kilojoules. So, that indicates this reaction, this proportionation is favored. Your simple uh, summation will show you that this mercurous chloride is unstable with respect to the disproportionation reaction. So, let us look into the uses and the toxic effects of zinc, cadmium and mercury. Of course, uh, uh, zinc is very, very important in biological system. It acts as a carbonic anhydrous that means it removes CO2 from blood and pH of the blood is maintained. Uh, you know that H2O plus CO2 gives H plus plus HCO3 minus and this compound is responsible and here uh, uh, imidazole nitrogen of histidine is binding here with coordination number of 4 where one of the coordination site is occupied by OH2. This is carbonic anhydrous. So, another one is uh, liver alcohol dehydrogenase. Uh, this complex having two cysteines and one histidine bound zinc having one water molecule converts the alcohol present in the liver. One should remember someone who is not having this enzyme should never ever consume alcohol. And you can see here alcohol is essentially normal is ethanol CH3CH2OH and here with this uh, compound basically what happens it is converted into aldehyde now. Okay. So, that means essentially the uh, metabolism of alcohol takes place using this zinc compound it is called liver alcohol dehydrogenase. There is one more called carboxypeptidase. Uh, peptide bonds of the proteins we consume are hydrolyzed is known as peptide hydrolysis. This enzyme hydrolyzes the bonds from the terminals of the protein, these three ligands here. Uh, and then it has one water molecule, it is called carboxypeptidase. In all these three compounds, zinc is the metal ion. Okay. So, the low melting point of mercury results in its being a unique metal. It is high thermal expansion coefficient makes it a suitable liquid for use in thermometers and it has widespread application in barometer diffusion pumps and in mercury switches in electrical operators. An older use was in mirrors. Some of the metals dissolve in mercury to give amalgam, their use are varied. For example, cadmium mercury amalgam is a component in the western cell, sodium amalgam is a convenient source of sodium as a reducing agent, silver amalgam is used for silver filling in dentistry. Nowadays, it is uh, discouraged because of the toxic effects and volatility of uh, mercury. After entering the body as mercury vapor, the metal accumulates in the kidneys, brains and testicles. It is converted into mercury 2 plus and is readily coordinated by thiol donors present in the proteins. The end result of mercury poisoning is severe damage to the central nervous system. One of the reasons why the toxicity of mercury is so high is that its retention time in body tissue is especially very long. That means, it can stay as many as 65 days in the kidneys. So, after entering the body as mercury vapor, the metal accumulates in the kidneys, brain and testicles. It is converted into mercury 2 plus and is readily coordinated by thiol, RSH donors present in proteins. The end result of mercury poisoning is very severe. I conclude the chemistry of group toll elements. In my next lecture, I will be discussing the organometallic chemistry of main group elements. Until then have a pleasant reading of main group chemistry. Thank you very much.